Hi there. Welcome to a brand new episode of Branding with Friends, the show where branding meets key small business topics. Here, you're going to learn tips straight from the experts on everything from marketing to book writing to SEO and social media. We focus on what you can do right now to use these elements of business and the power of branding to attract your ideal clients. I'm your host, branding expert, Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. I help small business owners tell their story and show their value through branding. I'm also a former Disney storyteller, professional speaker, and the author of the best-selling book, Permission to Try. And today, I am so excited to introduce you to one of my friends from the business world. If you would love to become more visible and get booked on podcasts in ways that will grow your business, you are going to love what we're talking about today. My guest today is the dynamic Kathleen Gage. Kathleen is known as the no-nonsense, common-sense business strategist, speaker, author, content marketer, and owner of Power Up for Profits and Plant-Based Eating for Health. She's been an online marketer and visibility strategist for over 20 years, and she's owned her current business since 1994. Kathleen has both interviewed and been inter interviewed over a thousand times, so she knows what to do to get asked back again and again. Her focus is working with bona fide experts who have an important message and mission who are willing to go the distance to play full out. Kathleen, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for being on Branding with Friends. Annie, it is great to be here. Thank you. Excellent. Well, um, you know, I was asking around for, for topics and I believe Diana Needham, who was on one of our shows talking about book marketing. And I said, who would be great? And she said, Kat, you got to get Kathleen, um, especially if you're interested in podcasts. And I know so many people who have service-based small businesses, they want to become more visible. They want to become in-demand podcast guests. Um, so how did you, you have a long history with this. You've been interviewed a ton as, you know, over a thousand times. So tell us a little bit about how you got into um, the world of helping people get booked on podcasts. Shows. Well, I actually started in broadcast media back in 1986. So we're going back a while. And I was just thinking, I've owned my business over a quarter of a century, and that makes me feel really old. But really what it is, is just time in the industry. And as the internet became popular back about 20, 22 years ago, uh, podcasting was a non-existent uh, entity. And over time, first we had uh, websites, which back then you had to really know HTML to put a website up or you had to hire somebody. Then we had blogging, then we had article marketing, and it's gone the whole gamut. And something that's been tried and true, that especially in light of where business is going in the future, podcasting is really one of the best platforms for somebody to actually uh, showcase what their expertise is. So it's been really a matter of recreation over and over again in the last 20, 25 plus years that I've been in business. You have such incredible perspective that I think, you know, a lot of business owners, you know, the people who are leading in the space have many times been in business just for a few years and you have, you know, decades of experience you're bringing to bear and it's like podcasts are just the newest iteration, right? So how fantastic that you have sort of this overview of content marketing over time and what it means to become visible. Um, folks, if, as you're turning in, if this is your first episode of Branding with Friends, I'm so excited to let you know that Kathleen, like all of our experts, is going to deliver three big tips for you, things you can actually put into action right now. So uh, we're going to talk about those tips as we go, but these are things that you can do if you want to become an in-demand podcast guest. So um, without further ado, we're, we're going to save that third one for the end, as you remember. So wait till the end of the episode to make sure you get that third tip. But in terms of the first place we start, what is the most important thing a small business owner should do if they want to get booked on podcasts? Well, first of all, and I'm going to add a fourth tip in, the, the, right. the number one tip is you have to have the desire to do so, and you have to get over the fact that you're not going to be perfect. You, we were talking about that earlier, and yeah. a lot of times people want everything to be perfect. They want their delivery to be perfect, and what you're going to find is the more you're yourself, the better off it's going to be, because it's not about having a polished presentation. It really is about creating value and being willing to just put yourself out there. So the number one tip, that, that's kind of a bonus tip, but the number one tip for getting on shows is, uh, first of all, to realize you're not going to go from zero to 60 overnight. It takes planning, it takes progress, it takes commitment. And I have people who say, well, how do I get on the big shows? I want to get on the big shows because they seem to think that one big show is going to do it for them and then they never have to be on a podcast again. And what you're going to find is if you find some of the smaller shows and you start with that and you grow into the bigger shows, oftentimes you don't need the bigger shows. And so right. 
it's kind of what I call the Oprah synd syndrome, where people, they wanted to get on Oprah and they had never been on a TV show in their local market. And it's the same with podcasting. A lot of people want to get on the Lewis Howe show, or they want to get on the Hal Elrod show, or whatever big show within their industry. And the reality is, is that if you really focus on smaller shows, you're going to perfect your message, you're going to get really good at what you do, and you're going to get very comfortable with what you do, because you'd rather, quite seriously, make mistakes on smaller shows than the bigger shows. Yeah, I think there's something really to be said for that. And that's something I try to teach my entrepreneurs as well is that, you know, it's not about having 100,000 followers. It's not about being on the biggest things. Um, you don't go from zero to 60, as you've been saying, like, you don't just go jump to Oprah. Some people are lucky enough to do that. But, you know, generally speaking, there's so much value to be had to sort of work your way up and to um, be a part of audiences that are smaller, but really powerful and really right. loyal. Um, and to your point, perfecting the message. So if you could talk a little bit about that, obviously it's branding with friends. So if you talk a little bit about how, um, what you tell your clients and why, what about, what, is, how branded do they need to be before they can go pitch themselves to the podcast they want to be on? Well, you know, it's something that evolves because I look at how in the time I've been in business, my message has evolved, my uh, purpose has evolved. And so if you think that you're going to have it all figured out right away, you're not going to. So it's something that you really grow into. And I'll use myself as a great example. I uh, about two years ago went plant-based and now I focus a lot of my attention on the plant-based market. I get on plant-based shows. And with that, what was what drove me in the beginning when I went plant-based is very different than what's driving me now. So if I would have expected to have it all figured out, you know, a week into eating plant-based, I, I would have been sadly mistaken. And it's the same with the experts that I work with that um, I have one client who was a stroke victim and she calls herself a stroke survivor and a stroke thr thriver now. She wrote a book and actually Diana was, was her mentoring coach on uh, getting her book to market. And it, it, the book is called Stroke Forward and Marcia, um, Marcia Moran is the author. And it's interesting because she is probably my most ideal client because when I say, go try this, she'll go try it. She gets a great result. She comes back and she goes, I got on 10 shows. This is really amazing. And she's not worried about having everything perfect. So yeah. she's actually evolving into her message and she's getting on bigger and bigger shows all the time. So it sounds like it's a lot of um, practice, right? Getting out there and using your message is really critically important. And I, I, I talk a lot about that when we do work together, when we, I create a brand voice guide for a client, I say, this is a toolkit. So it, like any toolkit, if you leave it in the shop and don't go use it, it's not going to build you anything. Right. Absolutely. So if you don't get out there and start practicing and using your message clearly, consistently, confidently, it's not going to happen. It's not going to do the work for you to just have the right words. You have to go speak them, you know, on podcasts and, and to try to pitch yourself and, and not worry about being, having everything perfect. And I think that that, I used to call that skip to action. So forget the lights and camera and just skip to action. Just is really I like critically that. important. I yep. like that. Just skip to action. And I've been in the speaking world for 25 years also. And what I find similarities between the speaking world and the podcasting world, people want things to be perfect and they're never going to be perfect. Yep. Like when you go and you do a speaking presentation, uh, you know, the lights may fall down quite seriously. <laughs> I've had some of the most bizarre things happen. And rather than worrying about that and saying, oh my gosh, why did that happen? You just incorporate that into the experience. It's the same with podcasting. It reminds me too, I'm also a speaker and um, I was giving a branding workshop a few years ago and the fire alarm started going off. Like it went like the really loud fire right, alarm right. and we're a big group and I'm answering questions and people stayed not only for the first fire alarm, but went off like three or four times. And I was like, wow, you guys must really want the answers to this because this is this really- This is a hot important. presentation. <laughs> a hot presentation. So, um, you know, even your worst fears are, are going to be okay. You have to just get out there and do. So I love that tip. Um, what is the next thing? What is the second thing that people should keep in mind about this? Really good question. And one, uh, the next one would be research the shows you're going to be on. And again, I'll use my show as an example. I have a show, Plant-Based Eating for Health. 
number one criteria, and there's no, there's no deviating from this at all, is the people that I have on my show must be 100% plant-based eaters and lifestylists. There is no exception to the rule. And I've had people contact me and say, well, I do the keto diet or I do this. And first of all, it's not a diet show. So that's the, the distinction. And if they would listen to the episodes, they would know. So in your research, you want to research the show, you want to research the host, you want to listen to some of the episodes, and you want to know what the show is about before you actually actually pitch the host because if what you, yeah if what you're pitching is completely off in left field don't think that you're going to be that one person that the host is going to make an exception to the rule a, a great example would be shows that don't have guests on them and I, I have several friends and colleagues who have shows where they're solo and they have people pitching saying yeah I was listening to your show and I know that I would be a great guest and the host says well if you would have listened you would know that I don't have guests on my show not every show is going to have a guest on it so don't think you're going to be that one magical person. What you have to do is you have to play by certain rules. And the rules are you have to know the show. You have to know something about the host. You can find out plenty by, I was actually listening to one of your episodes where the expert was talking about go on social media and you can learn a lot about people by simply looking at their Facebook page. You can look at their LinkedIn profile, their Instagram. You find out a lot about people. And if you know certain things, like for example, if I want to connect with somebody and they're very into animals, I have a lot that I can talk about with that because I rescue animals, we have horses, we have dogs, we have cats, we have chickens. Anybody who does research on me knows that I'm an animal person. So again, do your research on the show. Fantastic. I think that's such a really critical point. Um, and something I want to add to that, like not only play by the rules, but remember that you need to be professional at all times. And so one of the things I find really unprofessional is when people will pitch me um, for things like you said, like I'll get an email that's like, can I guest post on your blog? I've never had a guest poster on my blog for example. So it's like, they're not even taking the time to get to know me or another great example for anybody who's worked at a big company. I've worked at Disney. I've run a successful business. I get emails from people, go, students who want my time, but have, know nothing about me other than I worked for Disney and they right, want it. Right. They want all my time to help them get an internship or a job at Disney. Um, you want to put off, put on the air that you care enough about the person you're reaching out to and their goals that you're willing to do the work. Right. right. So it better well, better to apply one one or two podcasts than a hundred and have it be the absolutely. right pitch. That cares. And there's plenty of po uh, platforms now and there's plenty of membership programs now where you can join and you can actually pitch to hosts that are looking for guests. So it it is time consuming on some levels, but it doesn't have to be on other levels. If you're really targeted and you're clear on the type of shows that you would be a good fit for. And it's really more about the audience than it is the host because yeah. the host wants their audience to really enjoy the content. And it's not about going on and pitching a whole bunch of stuff. It's not like, you know, oh, buy my pair of glasses. It's like, these are good glasses. Let me tell you about my glasses. And for only $9.99, you can have my, no, 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 no. It's about what is the function of the glasses that you're going to be selling. And you're not even there to sell anything. Because think of your own listening habits and your own viewing habits. If you really like an expert, you're going to go search out their information. It's not that you have to be overt about selling, and it shouldn't be overt uh, selling. Right. It's your building up. Visibility is all about building up your know, like, and trust factor, right? A lot of people to get right. to know you. And you don't get to know somebody to your point if you're like, buy my glasses, buy my book, whatever right, the case right. may be. It's sharing your story, why you care, you know, your message. Right. And what I like about what you made very clear from the beginning, before we even started this uh, conversation, you made it very clear, this is not about pitching. This is about creating massive value. This is about giving tips. It's not a, a training per se, but it's yeah. really about tips. And I really appreciated your clarity because oftentimes hosts aren't that clear. And so that tells me something about the quality of show that you have. Well, thank you so much. We're, you we're always a work in progress. This is a, we're a couple episodes into branding with friends and figuring this out as we go. And, and to your first tip, like not worrying about it being perfect, right? You know, right, if there's right. a technical issue, is it whatever, we're just going to, we're going to have the conversation. And it's been such a gift. And I have to tell you that, um, you know, I think that that, that lesson going back to is so powerful because I'm hearing already from people who, you know, didn't watch the episode at first when it came out, but now have gone back and watched several episodes. They're telling me they've hired some of these people and are now working with them or are so excited to right. finally have the right person in their lives. And, and those person, people didn't come on and pitch. They came on and shared 
their story and what right. they could do well, to help you. I want to do a shout out to Diana because she is a master coach with book marketing. I used yeah. to do that back in the day, a very a long time ago, about 20 years ago, when Amazon campaigns were, were just starting to grow. I was one of maybe three or four people who taught people how to do the Amazon campaigns. Yep. And I've watched Diana really grow nicely into this. And the quality of clients that she works with and produces their, their books and their marketing campaigns you bring on amazing experts. Like I said, I listen to your episodes and I'm like, this is rock star stuff. And I have to tell you, from an older woman's perspective, I'm, I'm going to be 66 pretty soon. And I look at younger people and I, I went to a bunch of my colleagues and I said, you know what we ought to do is we ought to do some podcast episodes around the grandmothers of the industry because a lot of us have been around for 20, 25 years. I love it. But in, yeah. in certain circles, it's like younger people are more well known. So it's kind of like knowing that there's a time and a place for everything. Yeah. And as much as somebody can learn from me, I can learn from somebody who's substantially younger than I am. I love that. I love that idea about celebrating experience. And that's something I see a lot. I learn, I, I generally work with, I would say my primary ideal clients are women in their forties to sixties who are reinventing themselves. Um, they're becoming coaches and consultants and service-based business owners. Right. And they're in sort of the, the, that bucket of powerful women that have these decades of experience, but have not been able to give themselves credit for that through branding and through becoming right. visible, um, through their branding, through their messaging, how do they tell their story? Um, and how do they give themselves credit? That's something I think women in particular really struggle with. And that's something I've become a big advocate for is count those clients, show what you can do. Like you said, I've been interviewed over a thousand times. I'm going to remember that. That's a clear sign of success, right? And, and we don't want to hide who we are, even if we're older. If we're older, we have so much great experience to share. Oh, so. absolutely. And what's great about what we're going through in our, in our uh, society now and the direction business is going is that there are a lot of people who have been in corporate jobs that have either left by choice or they've yep. been forced out due to economic situations. And as a result, they're going to be starting businesses. So there are people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, even in to their 70s who are reinventing themselves. And one of the things I tell them is use the platform of podcasts to get your message out there and really, you know, decide what is it I want to do with my life? Because I think we're at such a great time in our, our history right now of business. Yeah. I went through it with uh, two, what was it? 2008, 9-11. I've gone through periods in my business where things were going great, you know, multiple six figure business, everything's humming along and literally overnight, everything crashed. Ugh. And there's a few things you can do with that. You can either pull the covers over your head. You can say, I, I quit. I don't want to do this. Or you can let yourself be under the covers for a while, pull yourself yeah. out and then say, okay, what do, what can I do with what I've learned? What direction do I need to go? And quite seriously in my own life right now, as I move into getting closer to my seventies, which just blows me away, I look at that and say, what do I want to do with my life? Well, part of it is the whole issue of people taking responsibility for their health. Yeah. I'm using podcast shows as a way to get my message out there. Fantastic. I love that. And I know you've got one more tip to share with us, but before we do that, I know you have something even better to share with our listeners. So um, go ahead and tell us uh, what is that thing that you are going to uh, share with Branding with Friends, folks? I have a pair of glasses for sale. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. No, quite, quite seriously, I have a checklist for how to get on podcast shows. It's a really, really uh, nice document. It's about 15 pages long. And so I'm a little extreme in what I do, but it's a, a real nice clear cut step by step checklist of how to get on podcast shows. And there's a video training that comes with it. And all Wonderful. you need to do, can I give the URL on that? Uh, you absolutely can. And anywhere okay. you're going to be watching this episode or listening to it, we'll also have that URL, but go Great. ahead. It's power up for profits, plural power up for profits.com forward slash branding. So poweruptforprofits.com forward slash branding. And I'll tell you, it's a great resource. There's no charge for it. And it's real quality information. I love that. So, so if you guys have been listening and you've been thinking about, okay, I need to get on that podcast. What do you need to do? Kathleen literally just handed you a checklist. So Absolutely. make sure to check that out. It's going to be in the show notes, wherever you're listening or watching Branding with Friends. And I'll also tell you if today's conversation got you thinking about your brand, do you, is your message clear? Are you feeling confident about how you're branding yourself, the tools you're using, like a logo or a message? Um, if that's something you want to talk about, I actually offer 20 minute complimentary consultations. So if you want to book one of those anywhere you're watching this, you will have a link to do that. Just 
just go to greateststorycreative.com and hop directly on my calendar and we can chat. Um, so you have ways to connect with Kathleen, ways to connect with me. Uh, but what is that final tip? We've talked a lot today about not aiming for um, intense ceilings like Oprah. We want to, you know, write level and not be a perfectionist about what we're doing. And we also want to be um, very intentional about researching people before we pitch them, listening to the show, knowing if we're a good fit, especially for that audience. What is that third thing we really need to keep in mind if we want to be on podcasts? The third thing, and, and it's not that you shouldn't aim to be on Oprah. I mean, I'm not telling people not to do that, but work into it. And where I really learned that, it really ties into the third tip, which is stick with it. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they'll try something for a little while. They don't get the result they think they should get, and they give up. And I got to tell you, you, if you want to be successful at anything, you have to stick with it. And where I really learned this out of anything I've ever done is when I ran my first marathon. I was 61 years old. I decided, okay, I'm going to do a marathon. What do I do when I move into my 60s? Well, what do, what do most people do? I don't know, but I'm going to do a marathon. Well, I trained and trained and trained, and there were shortcuts I took, which I shouldn't have taken them. And I thought, well, I'll take the shortcut because then I don't have to work as hard. Well, I found out the day of the marathon that had I really applied myself to the training, I would have done much better at the, the full marathon. And at mile 19, I was ready to give up. And it was in that moment in, at mile 19 that I actually had somebody confront me and they were riding their bike next to me and I'm kind of dragging along. And they said, oh, you're not quitting. You've worked far too hard for this. You're not quitting. I don't care if you have to crawl across the finish line. And sometimes we have to crawl across the finish line and it can feel like that. Yeah. And yet it's really about sticking with it. So if you have a vision, look at your big why. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is so important about your message? And if you're only doing things for money, and in the years I've had my business, I've made millions of dollars. So it's not like I don't like money. I like money. But I also know that if money is my only motivator, I'm not going to stick with something. So have your vision, have your why, have your goals of where you want to go and stick with it. Because I will tell you, it's not always going to be a bed of roses. But once you get through the tough times, it really gets fun. Oh, fantastic. I love that. And it's such a great note to end on today. I totally agree with you. And I think that's one of the biggest things that business owners need to take to heart, whether it comes to branding, marketing, your business overall. I see too many people lack persistence. You have to go the race. You have to go the distance, as they say in Disney's Hercules, uh, which I'm a big Disney nerd, as you all know. So the whole point is, is to stick with it. I think that's beautifully and eloquently said, because I will tell you that none of this happened overnight. My business didn't grow overnight. Kathleen didn't make her millions of dollars through her businesses or all those thousands of interviews overnight. It happens a little bit at a time. And if you give up too soon, it's not going to happen. Um, that's the biggest thing I'm seeing is people, you try it out for a couple of weeks. Oh, it's not working. And they give up. It takes, this is a, this is a long game to be an entrepreneur. It takes not, not days, not weeks, not months, but years um, and decades to really build a career. And you're a great example of that, Kathleen. Thank you so much for joining us today on Branding with Friends. It's been delightful. Thank you, Annie. Well, fantastic. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed yet another episode of Branding with Friends. So many thanks to my special guest, Kathleen Gage. Uh, tune in next time when we're going to tackle yet another topic that where branding is going to meet business. Until then, I'm Annie Franceschi of Greatest Story Creative. Find all our episodes, branding resources, and more at our website, greateststorycreative.com. If you go there, you can even hop on my calendar to chat with me. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day.